Today, it's all about the Dreamcast and how awesome it is. Hello, I'm doing this video out of the office where I edit all my videos. And today I just wanted to talk about the Dreamcast. You may look at my game room and see how everything is hooked up and ready to play and must think that I play video games all the time. I don't really get to play video games too often and I don't jump around from system to system as much as you might think. Don't get me wrong, the room is awesome. It's been a great challenge and I enjoy upgrading it and sharing it all with you guys. But I mainly play a hand full of systems and recently I've decided to concentrate on only one system and that's the Dreamcast. My goal is to play through every game in my Dreamcast collection. I have 91 of them which isn't as big a collection as some other people but that's still quite a lot. I enjoy playing these games from beginning to end. Assuming it has an end. Some of these games like Crazy Taxi does that have an end? I'm not sure. So why did I choose Dreamcast over all the other systems? A while back I did a video where I ranked every single game system and I did not rank Dreamcast as number one. It was in the top 10 though but it's slowly moving up that list in my mind and one day I may consider it my favorite system. Uh, it's looking like it may end up being that way. We'll see how this journey goes though. I jotted down some reasons why the Dreamcast is close to being my favorite system and here it goes. It is the best of the failed game systems. It may have only been around for a couple of years but it got a lot of support from Sega and it got a lot of support from third-party companies and during that brief time I think Sega was in its prime even more so than it was back in the Genesis era. I realize that's debatable, but it all comes down to the games that were being made for the Dreamcast. And the games Sega and the others were making for the Dreamcast were very, very good and very imaginative and a lot of other things, which I'll get to in a minute. I like how it was Sega's last hoorah. If you're gonna go out, you go out this way. I think Sega leaving the game system business was the worst thing to happen to gaming. Ever. I think we all lost out on a lot of great things because of that happening. Another thing I wrote down was the Dreamcast was an intersection between old school gaming and modern gaming. It seems to be the sweet spot in between those two things. I just think it was Dreamcast that kind of launched the era of the modern gaming. I don't think I'm explaining it too well, but hopefully that makes sense. It was just a sweet spot in between generations of gaming devices. Let's talk more about the specific games. Dreamcast had a lot of silly games, and that's a big plus for me. Just think about this. There's a game called The Typing of the Dead. I don't even need to explain that. That is such a ridiculous concept. They took a big Sega property and turned it into a typing game. They did not take it seriously at all. Think about Crazy Taxi. You're going around picking people up, and they're yelling at you, and you're just roaring down the street, hitting people, hitting cars. It's just so unrealistic, but very fun. I think Crazy Taxi captures the spirit of the Dreamcast perfectly. Seaman, or Seaman. That is a game where you're raising a pet in a tank and it's talking to you. It just says the most bizarre things to you and you can talk to it. Once again, it's very, very silly. Space Channel 5, there's dancing and singing and all this crazy stuff happening in space. Samba de Amigo, a game based on maracas. So many silly games. One thing you should know if you don't know already, the Dreamcast was very easy to program for. It was also very easy to take certain arcade games and dump them on the Dreamcast because it had a similar board inside to some of the boards that were being used in the arcades. This basically means there's a lot of games you can just pick up and play, not have to read the manual and just have fun with the game. One of those is 18 Wheeler. It's not the best game ever, but you do get to drive a big rig and you have to haul stuff to a destination. Crazy Taxi is another good pick up and play. It's just easy to just zoom down the street and park get a passenger inside and take them to their destination. That's another piece of the overall spirit of the Dreamcast. There was a lot of arcadey type games. I mentioned I have 91 games. I got a long way to go. I've probably only played through about 10 of them, but in the past I have played uh, a lot more than 10. I originally had the Dreamcast when it first came out. I was actually in an NFL 2K tournament uh, with my friends, or it might've been more like a league or something. And at that time, the NFL 2K series was very well re received and everyone loved it. And it was exclusive to the Dreamcast. 
at that time. I want to mention my two favorite games for the system so far. Toy Commander and Draconis, Cult of the Worm. I played through Draconis like a year ago. I had it on my shelf for a long time, but I never knew anything about it. It is very similar to Dark Souls. Maybe not difficulty wise. I ended up playing through it twice because you can play as two different characters. It was such a great adventure game and I'm probably going to play through it again one day. Toy Commander. I think this may be one of the best games ever made. I may make a video one day of my favorite games and this is in contention for number one, at least in the top 10. How can I explain it? You're a kid playing with toys in the house. You're doing little missions and the missions you are doing are things that are straight out of a kid's head. It's just cool that you get to play in all the different rooms of the house, including the basement, the attic, the bedrooms. You can even fly into the bathroom and go down the toilet. It's bright and it's colorful and the music is pretty cool. It may just be my personal taste. I don't know if everyone will have the same reaction to that game. Talking about Toy Commander, I'm reminded that Dreamcast was the first system, I think, that did 3D very well. The textures and stuff may be slightly laughable today, but they do meet my minimum qualifications for looking good. But they pull off what they need to pull off. Toy Commander takes place in every room of the house. It probably could have been done on the PS1, but it would have been downgraded a lot. Same goes for the N64. The Dreamcast was just a notch above N64 and PS1. In my opinion, the 3D games for it are still enjoyable today, despite being 20 years old. But here's the main reason I am choosing to play the Dreamcast the most right now. It is because I am looking at the list of games that I have yet to play, and I already know that a lot of them are well-known hits. But there's a lot of hidden gems as well that nobody talks about. I already mentioned Draconis. I can go up to a thousand people at the mall and ask them about this game. They wouldn't know anything about it. At the time the Dreamcast was out, everyone was thinking about the PS2. And all the attention was drawn to the PS2. And once the PS2 launched, uh, that was it. No one was paying attention to the Dreamcast, except for hardcore Sega fans like me. I think there's still a lot of enjoyment ahead on, on my road to playing through it. Just some games I'm looking forward to playing. MDK2, Star Lancer, Skies of Arcadia, in general, it's fun to play games that no one else is playing. When I was playing through Slave Zero recently, I felt like I was the only one in the world that was actually playing that game at that time. Now don't get me wrong, it's a horrible game and it's terrible compared to the PC version. Which brings me to my final point. I could just be imagining how good the Dreamcast is. It could be just a Sega fanboy within me that uh, wants to see Sega live forever and just can't let go of Sega. I'm looking at the system with rose-colored lenses. I'm sure there's some truth to that. It could be that as I play through more of the games, I'll realize that these games are outdated and um, they don't deserve this much attention. But we'll see about that. I think there's a lot of bad games on the path ahead of me for the Dreamcast, but overall I think it has a higher percentage of good games compared to the other systems that I have ever played. But let me know what you think. Am I full of BS or do you agree with some of my points? Do you like these type of casual videos where I just talk about one topic? If you want to see another video just like this one, you can watch my video on how retro game prices are falling. The link for it is on the screen right in front of you. May your games make you happy and smart, and may people respect you for playing them. So long, everybody. We are Packlet. Our ship is the Mondor. It is broken. <laughs>